Hello, you pissy hamburgers covered in fucking lumps of crusty shit. I'm Jim Sterling, and this is Zombie National Park. You always know you're in for a good time when one of the screenshots on the Steam Store page is this. The menu screen. I don't know why some games do that. Uh, anyway... Normally I find these games on my own, I check uh, the new releases every day and pick up interesting things. Every now and then Total Biscuit will email me something uh, because I guess he just likes watching me play uh, bad games and finds things that he thinks look uh, uh, like they might be uh, terrible. Uh, so thanks John, uh, gonna give this a go right now. Look, look at us going. It says there, sometimes it's better to run away. Uh, I get the sense that this game might be an example of that in totality. Anyway, uh, bloody hell, right. Where, where's all that stuff? Okay, well, as usual with uh, Scotty Play, I uh, am diving in sight unseen. It didn't look brilliant, but it is, uh, it's billing itself as a, a roguelike Zombie game. Lord knows we need more roguelike likes. That's what they are, they're not roguelikes, they're roguelike likes. Uh, with zombies. So it's got two of Steam's favourite things. Roguelike likes and the undead. Uh, fully freeform control. I mean, it's weird. The guy's kind of gliding along on the floor. But, you know... You can do full old strafing and everything. He only looks in the direction that uh, you point the mouse. The game seems to skip and freeze every time you go a certain distance, or I guess a certain amount of times fast. One thing I've already learned is it's good to just focus on the main character and not look at the ground while moving, because that made me feel very sick. Anyway. Oh, that's that's him then. So we got a battery. Oh god, I've got to stop looking at the grass. Blah. Okay, we'll try some guns in a bit. Oh, we've reached the end of that bit. Let's try it up here. We're at the edge. Oh no, no, look at that. What was at the edge? And we found a thing. Let's go in the thing. That's ammo and a bulletproof vest. Which, uh, looking at the screen at the bottom, the on the bottom left, appears to automatically equip. Let's pop in here. Oh, We're downstairs. I can't see shit. Seeing if there was a, maybe an inventory or something, but apparently not. Uh, maybe we need a light or something. <sighs> Skip to go there. Oh god, so there is another zombie. At this point, I'm, I'm eager for just something to happen. Can't get him through the fence. That's annoying, that skip. Uh, it's not very exciting, is it? <laughs> All right. Okay. Go look at that other zombie over here. Maybe he's got some stuff. Since it's a dull vid, good time to uh, catch you all up on what's been going on with my Dungeons and Dragons lately. My bard has become a vampire. Uh, I got bitten by a vampire the week before last, or the session before last, and uh, and um, was told by a, a cleric of a temple 
that I had seven months before my character Flynn, Flynn Flash, would would uh, become an uncontrollable killing machine without a soul. Uh, my DM, ever keen to tempt and tantalise his players, uh, introduced us, because we were in a city of the dead, basically, ruled by a, a school, like a, an evil Hogwarts with a vampire headmaster. I'll press H to use answer to do. All right. Um, anyway, there's all vampires and stuff in there. Found a book called The Blood Codex, which I kept secret from the other... Uh, players because I figured it might have something interesting in it and it did Blood Codex was instructions for a ritual to become a free willed vampire and naturally I took the bait and he gave us the vampire templar, oh I'm dead gave me the vampire templar over my bard Crossbow. Let's try that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, got some nice strengths. Got a lot of weaknesses, of course. Um, the party were not pleased. Oh, I guess I haven't got bolts. That's fine. Uh, but you know what are you gonna do? They seem very concerned, especially with some of the limitations we have now. Obviously. Uh, we need to find a way to get me travelling during the day. And um, I can't enter things without being invited because of that weird vampire role. Um, Flannel's just trying to indicate that dungeons might count for that. I mean, that would make the character unplayable. Uh, I'd have to re-roll. Oh dear. Good oh, he's dead already. Good job I don't mind re-rolling. But I'm very interested to at least try and see if we can keep the... Keep it going. Oh my god, I have to sit here reloading everything separate. Can I just hold it, maybe? Nope. I have to press R for every reload. But anyway, I'm interested in giving it a go, see whether I can uh, play as a vampire for a while. I once had a concept for a ghoul bard for Third Ed. Never got round to doing it. The idea of a bard, but with some undead element to it, in has interested me conceptually. And I didn't plan to be a vampire, but... Uh, it is nonetheless an interesting option. And I'm a character... I'm a player who... Uh, ooh. I'm a uh, player who always takes an interesting route if one's available. So that's what I had to do, just fucking load the bolt. Right. Anyway. Uh, so I had an interesting option open to me, and I took it. And if it turns out I fucked myself, character-wise, you know, we'll either find a way to fix it, or, or the party will turn on their friend Flynn. And put a stake through his heart. Either way, it'll make for a good story, and that's why I play those games, for a good story. Oh, yeah. Fun. I mean, not fun, but. All that bolt spot. So yeah, I'm now uh, the Vampire Lutist, Vampiric Bard. Get some health regen, not brilliant health regen, but health regen. Get uh, spider climb whenever I want. Boost to my strength. Got dex and com boosts as well, but they were already at that level. Because I've got some good damn rolls. So, yeah, that's SD and D at the moment. I'm excited by it, even if I only end up doing it for one session before everyone gets sick of me and uh, uh, just throws me out into the sun. I'm excited to give it a go. Always a big sucker for uh, something off the beaten path and intriguing.
Well, the bolt makes things uh, very manageable indeed. As long as we can keep picking up the uh, bolts themselves. My first aim, if I'm going to make the vampire thing work, is, uh, well, first of all, find an interesting way to travel around at night. I already have an, an interesting item that the uh, Flannel, the DM, made. He, made. he likes making weird, screw you magic items. And I've got the, the box of princely comeliness, which he said was a, uh, it's a set of makeup tools and things. You plaster yourself in makeup for an hour, it raises your charisma to 19. And with all of his, what he calls the better than nothing items, uh, the, there's a trade-off. The trade-off is I have to make a, uh, I think it was either a wisdom or a con save, like every few weeks after uh, applying the makeup for a while. Because the lead content of the makeup is uh, so high you know, that uh, I could go mad. It could seep into the blood and uh, I'd end up with uh, some insanity status effects. But uh, our rationale as the players are, if it's that heavy in lead and I'm plastering my face in it, is that protection from the sun? And Flau seem to be uh, making some allowance for that. Because he pointed out that obviously my eyes would need protection. So if I can get some gnomish goggles or something, then I'm alright under the sun. So that's one potential idea. If there's some way we can get permanency with the darkness spell on something, I mean, there's some way we can deal with that. And I know our druid has some plan to be able to get us to travel a, a huge amount in a gaseous form. Which we feel may work as well. Oh, right. Use antidote. So, anyway, that's that. I'd like Flannel's magic items. Again, it's that thing where it's like you could screw yourself using them, but. I'm going to use them every time because I love seeing what happens and I love making things interesting. It's not an optimal way to play. Um, our boy Jeff is our cleric and he's a lot more uh, acqu acquisition of power focused. He plays to fight and level up and get powerful. Um, we actually we get along very well uh, and we kind of complement each other well enough because I don't try and fuck anyone else over. But it, I, I, I sense that my idea of what is a, a fun game is different enough from him that it can be a bit... Well, that's weird. Now it's very dark. Uh, it can be a bit frustrating for him at times. So he took the vampire thing, not too great. But uh, some of the other magic items I've ended up with... Again, these are all from Flannel's Better Than Nothing um, collection, which he's been posting up on one of the Reddits, one of the subreddits. I forget which one. I'll have to get clarification if anyone's interested. Um... Hang on. It's amazing that I'm uh, seeing anything at all here. Uh, what else have I got? I've got a. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. If I even got a name, but I've got a set of clothing. Beautiful black uh, cloth with gold lining. Um, that is incredibly beautiful to behold. And it gives me a... Oh, that's a bit of a tree. And it gives me a... Oh, I forget what it is. Like a 19 armor or something. It gives me um, a high... For something that is essentially light armor. Something very uh, desirable. Better than what I had, certainly. But you have to have... The enemy has to have an intelligence score of uh, greater than uh, 4. An intelligence modifier. Is that right? No, no, no. An intelligence score of greater than 8. Um, because it has to be intelligent enough to be swayed by the beauty of the clothing and therefore be less uh, eager to hit it. 
Uh, if I'm fighting anything too stupid to appreciate the value of a good set of clothes, uh, the armor value is nothing. Yeah, it's just interesting. And I've got the scorpion loot, which replaced just the standard bard loot I had. Scorpion loot is an indestructible loot. That's all it is. Just indestructible. But when it's indestructible, it means it absorbs shock as well. So um, the example given in the write-up, because he writes little backstories for the items, the example he gave was... The game's still playing if you just see black, by the way. Um, in fact, let me see if there's a brightness. Oh, I can't even hit the escape. It didn't work. Anyway, the description he gave was there was a story attached to this loot where there was uh, bandits chasing an adventuring party and the bard jumped off the cliff laughing and put the, uh, the loot out underneath his feet and then just landed on the ground and, and ran off laughing because it, it just absorbs that much shock. And I actually used it because we were on a staircase and a... Uh, Still trust me? I don't think so. Yeah, big staircase with no real manoeuvrability and a big rock boulder coming towards us. And I get the loot and I put it in front of myself and just kneel and get pushed all the way down the stairs by the boulder. Because it didn't stop the boulder, but it didn't cause the boulder to crush over me. So that was interesting. And I have um, the Elder Cloak. Which, you put it on and you get turned into a random ooze. And, uh, oozes with various properties. And when you, uh, t get reduced to zero hit points, you don't take any of the damage yourself. Uh, but you lose a turn where you're vomiting and retching from the awful experience of having been an ooze. That's fun. Anyway, that's day two new suit. I think that's all the fun stuff in D&D today. And I see no value in keeping going on this. Bye.